you may have been told that eating more than six eggs a week is a bad idea. Here's why that's wrong. Welcome to 9 Minutes to Better Health, a podcast series that breaks down real science for you to use in your daily life. G'day, I'm Dr Nick Fuller. I'm an obesity expert from the University of Sydney and RPA Hospital. The truth about obesity is it's a multifaceted problem. And on 9 Minutes to Better Health, I arm you with the science that you can use every day to answer important questions. Each podcast, I'll tackle the latest research on interesting health and wellness subjects. I'll chat about topics like, is it okay to have full fat dairy? Why is your poo brown and how do you know if it's healthy? And do weight loss pills work? which is a topic we covered last week, so make sure to go back and find out which ones are as good as they say they are. But back to today's topic. How many eggs is too many eggs? Most of you will know why eggs get such a bad rap. It's because of their high cholesterol content. An egg contains about 200 milligrams and it's found in the yolk. But the short answer is that despite their high cholesterol content, you can eat two eggs every day. Yes, two every day. However, if you're at high risk of heart disease, this is where it gets complicated because governing guidelines across the globe are not consistent. So in today's podcast, we're going to dig into why there's been so much confusion when it comes to eggs and do a deep dive into the science. There is no shortage of literature when it comes to this topic. Apart from their high cholesterol content, the reason why we've been told to stay clear of eggs over the years is due to several large observational studies showing that high egg consumption more than six eggs per week, is associated with worse heart outcomes in people with type 2 diabetes. What this means is those who consume more eggs are more likely to develop heart disease or die early, but only those with established disease, that is, type 2 diabetes. So I'm not talking about the general population. I'm only talking about people who are already unwell. This is important as adults with diabetes are two to four times more likely to die from heart disease than adults without diabetes. So these studies are not finding any negative outcomes on high egg intake for the general population, that is, people that are healthy. They're only reporting adverse outcomes for people already at risk of heart disease. These findings come from observational studies, studies in which groups of people are followed up over time and asked to report on things like what they ate and how their health is. They come with their limitations, and in these egg studies, there are various factors which are hard to control for and which can affect the results. For example, at the time that these studies were being conducted, a public health campaign advised people to limit their cholesterol and egg intake. For those old enough, you might have remembered it being splashed across the cover of Time magazine in the mid-1980s. It was thought that they were bad for us, so we were told to stay clear of them. People who were eating more than six eggs per week at that time may have been less likely to follow healthy dietary and lifestyle advice in general. For example, they may have been eating a lot of fast food, processed foods, had a low fruit and vegetable intake, or even frying up their eggs with bacon. But by the late 90s, eggs were back on the menu, as more research came out. But this time, gold standard, randomised controlled trials showing they weren't bad for us after all. Despite this, over time, observational studies continue to be published and continue to show differing results. One minute a study will say they're bad, the next it will say they're good. And this is the very problem. Despite more controlled studies becoming available over time, The evidence base for this topic on eggs is mainly observational studies. To refresh your memory, what we do in these studies is follow up a large group of people over a long period of time, decades, and then we administer regular questionnaires to assess their health, diet, and lifestyle factors, as well as development of disease. Consequently, observational studies are not able to determine causation, and instead can only say one thing is associated with another. For example, those eating more eggs had a higher rate of diabetes. It's very difficult to understand the relationship between a specific food and health outcomes in these type of studies. This is where controlled studies or randomised controlled trials come into play. In these studies, people are randomised to either a diet high in eggs or high in cholesterol containing foods, or a diet low in eggs or low in cholesterol. We then select various outcomes of interest, for example, risk factors for heart disease, such as cholesterol, and then measure the effect of each diet on health over a defined period, for example, 3 to 12 months. You're better able to control for confounding factors as you can prescribe a specific diet over a set period of time, 
and you're better able to determine whether a food caused an outcome rather than being associated with an outcome. The important thing to note is that when you look at the randomized controlled studies in the general population and those at high risk of heart disease, that is those with type 2 diabetes, they show either favorable effects of high egg intake or at worst, no negative effects of a higher egg intake on heart disease and diabetes risk factors. So eggs are one of those foods that don't necessarily improve your cholesterol level, but they don't worsen it either. In controlled studies, this has been shown at an intake of up to 12 eggs per week, and even in people at high risk of heart disease, such as those with type 2 diabetes. My advice. Although eggs are rich in cholesterol, the total amount of fat is not high, approximately 5 grams, and it's predominantly the mono and polyunsaturated fats, which are good fats and protective for your heart health. This is important to note as foods high in saturated and trans fat are responsible for the greatest impact on cholesterol levels and the increase in blood cholesterol levels from eating foods containing dietary cholesterol, like eggs, is minimal. When you eat foods containing dietary cholesterol, your body just makes less of it. The advice on eggs has changed considerably over the past several decades, leading to much consumer confusion. To make things even more complicated, the guidelines for how much cholesterol we are allowed to consume and how many eggs we are allowed to eat differs between countries. For some countries, the guidelines are mostly based on the outdated and since proven incorrect observational trials based on a population that already has a disease. They don't take in the more current controlled gold star trials that show us that up to 12 eggs a week are fine to include as part of a healthy diet. This is partially because health guidelines tend to be conservative to avoid a risk to the greatest number of people, and partially because the people who write them will wait for a number of studies to show the same thing repeatedly before they update the health advice for a population, so they do rely on the old science that has since been disproven. For example, in Australia, if you have type 2 diabetes, government guidelines advise you to stick to less than 7 per week. But if you live in the UK, for example, an endless amount of eggs are fine for everyone. In the United States, the American Diabetes Association no longer impose a limit on cholesterol. They used to recommend a limit on total cholesterol consumption of 300 milligrams per day, but there is no longer any such limit. However, another US group, the National Lipid Association, tell people with high cholesterol to limit their dietary cholesterol to less than 200 milligrams per day. My take home message, you can eat up to 12 eggs per week as part of a healthy diet. I'm not saying you should be frying them with bacon or smothering them in hollandaise sauce, but when eaten as part of a healthy diet, they won't increase your cholesterol or your risk of heart disease. It's far more important to look at the overall diet rather than a specific food. Eggs, fish, seafood, meat, legumes, nuts and seeds all make for good protein sources and you should be using a variety throughout the week. That's all for today, so please give us a like and share with others if you're enjoying the content, and make sure to subscribe to the podcast to stay updated. The information provided in this podcast is for educational purposes only. It does not substitute professional medical advice or consultations with healthcare professionals.